we've been talking about the potter's wheel. I'm not going to give out the uh, paperwork tonight because I'm just trying to follow the Lord here. Jeremiah 18, starting with verse 1. It's up on the board. And we're going to go all the way down to um, chapter 6, I mean verse 6. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. God is talking to Jeremiah and he says, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And this is what he says, And there I will cause you to hear my words. I hope you catch that. I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he was working at the wheel. Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. When I was reading that, it, it struck me. So many times we want to see the face of God. We, we want to hear from God. And sometimes we're not in the proper position or the proper place for God to cause us to hear His Word. But as I was reading that, it just struck me that Sometimes we are in places where he can cause us to hear his word. Some places that we don't need to be. And he has to get our attention and try to bring us down to a place where he can cause us to hear his word. And Jeremiah says, Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he was working at the wheel. That is, the potter was. And the vessel, verse 4, And the vessel that he was making from clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he made it over, reworking it into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter. To make it. You know, sometimes we start out in Christianity, and I've seen this in so many people's lives. And they've been Christians for maybe 10 years. And all that period of time, they were doing their own thing and really following their own desires. And God just had to get their attention. I got to make you all over again. You've been marred by the world. You've been marred by your own thinking. You've been marred by your own ambitions. But let me put you back on the potter's wheel and make you into a vessel that I desire you to be. Now hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying tonight now. Because I've seen this in so many people's lives. Today I see people that, that, uh, that are backsliding like I've never seen before. And they come into this church and they move along so well. But I know that their heart is really not in it. They are still so connected with this world system, with the world thinking that they fall apart. Their, their marriage falls apart. Everything falls apart. And they say, what happened? And sometimes they just have to come to this place to recommit their life to Christ and say, you know, I repent, Lord. I started out this way and I thought this is the way you lived the Christian life, but now ten years later, it ain't working the way I thought it was going to be. And then God would say to them, let me put you back on the, the wheel. 
let me make you into a vessel that I want you to be. You know, we're so independent today. And I've been a very independent man, and God had to change me in so many different ways and change my thinking because I could do it. But how many of you know God will bring you to a place where you know you can't do it? And it's scary. It really is. It is scary. Similar to the experience that Willie and Martha probably had, you know. I mean, all of a sudden, you were in a place to hear the word of the Lord. You heard the word of the Lord in that situation. You were in a place where you could hear. But everything going so good in the house. You know, that's one thing that, that God had to do with the Israelites. He warned them that when you come into the land and you come into this prosperity and you come in and, and you get all this land and you get all this wealth and you come to a place where you say, well, I, I, I'm the one that, that's the reason I have this wealth. If it's because of my work and my labor, and God says, be careful. No, it is the Lord that gives you wealth. It is the Lord that raises you up and puts you down. And see, the biggest discovery that we can find in life, I want you to listen to this, that one of the biggest discoveries we can find in our Christian life, God's God and we are the clay. Let it sink in. We are the clay. How many of you know we've been made from the dust of the ground? That goes all the way back to Genesis. Now, I'm not putting people down, but I'm saying that once you realize God is the one that has all power, God is the one that causes us to get wealth, and we have to learn that. It is very dangerous to come to that place to say, look what I have done. Nebuchadnezzar came to that point, and if you read about Nebuchadnezzar, and God warned him a year before God had to deal with him. And he didn't humble himself. Pride came in. And what comes after a pride? A fall. And brother, he fell. And I know in our understanding as, as human beings, we don't understand these things, but God has an agenda. I, I want to say that again. God has an agenda. Why are we here on the earth? Why have we been created? Well, we've been created to make for us. No, no, we've been created for him. All things have been. See, you come to that place in your life that the reason I am here, the reason I breathe, the reason I have health and strength, the reason is because of him. And see, some people don't know that yet, but when the lights go out, when there's nothing in the store to buy and you ain't got no gasoline to get down to the store even if they had something. Now who is your God? See, there is a transformation that comes in our lives. There is an awakening that comes in our lives when we really are able to see the face of God in the situation and the circumstance that we find ourselves in. You will see the face of God in many circumstances in your life. Let's read a little bit more here. Look at verse 4. Let's see. And the vessel that he was making from clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he made it over, reworking it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Now, who's the potter? Who's our potter? God. God is our potter, and he's molding us. He, he's taken circumstances. He's taken situations. I've been in circumstances. I say, God, if you don't get me out of this circumstance, I'm going to go nuts. Anybody been there yet? Well, hey, I'm talking to the right. Anybody ain't been there yet? Well, you just hold on. You're going to get there, honey. Yeah. But see, it, it's, it's a shock. But some folks have to be shocked. 
God has a plan for our lives. And he is the potter. And many Christian people today have been so scarred and wounded. And God is saying, you haven't fallen too far from the potter's wheel that I can't get you back and put you back on that wheel and make you. But this time, let the potter make you what he wants you to be. Instead of you with your agenda, let him make you. I want, I want you to look at me. I am a country boy from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I am not a preacher. I don't want to be a preacher. All I ever wanted to do when I got saved was share Jesus. <laughs> it was so in my heart. That's all I wanted to do, to share Jesus. I wanted to plow. Not especially the mule. I like the tractor now. But you see, God had to turn me. Say, no, Bob, you the man. But I don't want to be the man, Lord. <laughs> you the man. And so the molding, the breaking through circumstances and situations begin to happen in my life to form me into a man that has no ambitions other than to see God's people grow, mature, and become all that they can be in Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about heaven and hell here. I'm not talking about being saved. I am talking about being conformed into the image of the Son of God. I have dealt with mothers that have children. I don't want to be a mother. I don't want to have children. Honey, you better sober up a little bit, honey. It's too late now. You as a mother, you got three kids, you settle down, and you learn how to take care of the house, you learn how to do dishes, you learn how to do what needs to be done as a mother. Some of you looking at me with sour faces, but I love you. It's too late now. Let God, hear God in that situation. Hear God that he can mold you into the vessel taking care of three kids. He can mold you into the vessel that he wants you to be doing the dishes. He can mold you into the vessel that he wants you to be. Get your mind off of all this whirly, anky, hanky, punky, dooky, hanky, bonky stuff and settle down and become what he wants you to be at that moment. Well, he ain't going to leave you there. Those kids are going to fly out of the nest after a while. Unfortunately, they come back. But anyway, <laughs> then there's a remolding going on and a remolding going on. <laughs> How many love me tonight? But see, if we don't see these principles where we are at, and you will just want to, like, get me out. I don't want to be on that there potter's wheel. I don't want, I don't like that potter wheel. Lord, your hand is awful tough back there. I know that's a tough area, Bob, right in your, that stronghold needs to be ripped out of there, you know. No, you the man. So you have to then accept the calling of God and say, okay, do it. When God called Susan and me, he called us together. We both went down the, 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 the aisle in, the, in this Baptist church, and I looked over there, and I said, Honey, what are you doing here? And she said, Well, God's calling me. I said, Well, God's calling me. He called us together. He just called us. All I knew is God called us into the ministry. That's all I knew. I didn't know about being a pastor or nothing like that. I never thought anything like that. Never had no desire to do that. How many would like to have 20 kids? Okay. Now you're getting the point. I have more than 20 kids. Okay, now you can start praying real hard for me. For those that just have two or one or three. Now look at verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me. I love it. There he is down at the, at the potter's house. 
Then the word of the Lord. Now he's in position. Jeremiah's there. Hear the word of the Lord. God will cause him to hear the word of the Lord. Sometimes people strain. I like to hear God. Just walk with God by faith. He'll cause you to hear his voice. And don't try to figure it out, all the mechanics to it, because you never will. All you will know is, I heard the Lord. He calls me to hear his voice. And you have no doubts. Because he causes, called you, not called, but caused you to hear his voice. See, it's all in God's time, and it's all in God's power. We are the vessels. We yield. We were on Yaman Hall Road, and God called us out there. I know Rosemary remembers this, and, and we were out there for about seven and a half years, and Susan and me had poured our lives out for people coming into the things of the Spirit. We had to learn, too. Uh, I mean, it was a total different new walk than a denominational setting whatsoever. And we had to learn the things of the Spirit also. And God was causing me to hear his voice. And, and sometimes uh, I was sure that it was his voice. And other times I wasn't quite sure it was his voice. And then I started hearing other voices. And I said, you know, there's a real spiritual wor uh, uh, world out there. You know, demonic powers will speak to you too, you know. So you had to sift all of that out. And you have to learn and grow and mature. And God has to form you where you are able to hear the word of the Lord. And you're willing to carry it out. No need to talk to, to somebody that ain't going to carry it out. So sometimes God has to mold us into a place and get us into a place where we can hear. Think about it. When we, when we, Susan had to leave her brick home. All, everything she had. She, we took everything out of the front room, out of the everything. People, we had 70 people in our front room tearing our house down. Some of you can't conceive that. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. Oh, the saints did a good job remodeling our home. I surrender all. Good. I'll take it. Don't you touch that, Lord. Wait a minute. Was you new down at the altar? Singing with, singing with all those saints, I surrender all. There goes the front room. I surrender all. There goes the nice furniture. I surrender all. Seventy people in our house, cars out on the front line, lined up down the road. What's the neighbors going to think about this? So we got the place down at uh, Yaman Hall Road there, and there was a storefront, and God did a lot of miracles and things in those years, seven and a half years, and all of a sudden, this prophet comes to town and goes to Northwood uh, Church, and he prophesies that this Northwood is going to be the best church, and if you don't belong to this church, you're going to miss it. And a lot of my people, whoop, went down there. Now, you don't think I was not on the potter's wheel? God used me to save many of them, fill them with the Holy, got filled with the Holy Spirit, entered healing, ministered, poured our lives out for seven and a half years, and they all left me. On the potter's wheel. So we closed the place down. Frank was with me back in those days, and he took care of everything in that building. He tore it all down. Got we because we had we had a baptismal pool built in there. Everything. He took care of all that for me. And Susan and me. I remember we went downtown in front of Murray Vocational High School where I went, and we were out there on the ground. We said, Lord, what is this? We, feel like we, were, we felt like we were chewed up, 
spit out and shoot out again and spit out again. Everybody left us, and there we were on the bottom. But yet God was hand was on us, and he was molding us. And he raised us up a little higher. We began to seek the Lord for three months, and God spoke. He says, just keep on going. But, Lord, they've all gone. He said, you just keep having services in your house. You get behind that pulpit, and you just preach. And that's what I did. And God began to move. I never asked one person to come back. They began to repent, and many of them came back, and the church began to come forth again, and he raised it up. But in that process, there was molding, breaking, not understanding all that was going on in my life, in Susan's life. But we walked through it step by step. And God raised us up again. And from there on, things began to happen. Many, many, many experiences like that in our lives. And I just want to share with some of you tonight. I like the fuzzy fuzzy. But sometimes it ain't fuzzy fuzzy. Have you found that to be true? But he says, I'll never leave you and I will never forsake you. And you will learn God. If, if, you, if you will walk that thing through and obey the voice of the Lord, he has put you in a position. Now, if you listen, he will cause you to hear his voice. And he'll set your course straight once again. And you'll have purpose in your life once again. In the midst of the storm, you will rise up on the inside. And say, God is God. And if he be for me, who can be against me? Listen, this is not an intellectual thing that I'm saying. This is a revelation that comes. Whether you are a housewife or whatever position you may have in life. You can have such a relationship with God. You know that you know that you know that you know. And the anxieties and the fears and all of the things that we all are so afraid of vanish when you behold the one that created all things by the word of his power. That comes as he causes you to hear his voice. And then you begin to walk it out. It involves crying. Questions come. That's okay. It doesn't move God. Everything inside of you is turned upside down. And you'll come to that place that Job came to. Though you slew me, yet will I trust in you. Now you're on the now you've been made into a vessel that God can use. Sometimes we feel, and, and, and I have those feelings sometimes even, because when you love the Lord, it's like you never can do enough for him. That's the way it is with me. It's like, God, what can I do? Nothing. <laughs> can I be honest? Nothing. But let him, but let him work in you and do that sanctifying work where he can put you in a position where you can hear the word of the Lord. 
I don't know if I'm making sense. Is anybody understanding just a little bit of what I'm saying? Because it's spiritual. And you don't have to be Moses, and you don't have to be Bob Chilton. You don't have to be anybody. You are who you are, and you are special. And if the only purpose in your life is to raise those three children, you do it with the power of God and be satisfied with that. You, you have two. Go for it. Go for it. They're all sitting on the front seat. Grandma, go for it. Because you are special right where you are. And God is doing a work in you. And I tell people, those kids will grow. And you won't hear the door slam no more. I remember my oldest daughter. Honey, when you go out, don't slam the door. Okay, Dad. Boom! And the whole, everything in the house vibrates. I'm, I'm sitting on the couch and I'm vibrating. If I hear it one more time. If I could just hear it one more time. Please, Lord, just one more time. Sometimes, sometimes we feel that the situation that we are in is the most horriblest place in the world to be. And yet... You're right there where you can hear the voice of God. And boy, wow. I want to thank God for the grandmothers and the grandfathers. This generation would be in bad shape, listen to me, without the grandmas and the grandpas. Any, do I have a witness in here tonight? Yeah, look at the hands. Mm. Because we've lost a generation. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God has put faith in my heart that he's going to put them back on the potter's wheel. And he's, this time, this time, this time they will hear the voice of the Lord and not hear the other voices out there calling, hey, be this, be that. Make sure you're, you're, you're pretty all the time. Just be that little model, that, what's that little doll that they have? Barbie doll. And everybody trying to be a, dressed like a Barbie doll. Listen, you may have 200 pounds on your baby, but you belong to the Lord. Just trust God. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. You're in a place you can hear his voice. And you are loved. You're not loved because you're square. You're not loved because you're round. You're not loved because you're thin. You love because you've been created in the image of God, and God is love, and that's his nature, and he loves you for who you are. Amen. Absolutely. And I say that because I know how all our minds get, get all twisted up with all of the worldly stuff out there, that this is the place to have the party. I don't want to stir any of your minds up because I know some of you have been there. But it ain't there. It just ain't there. But this young generation, the devil's using all that glamour. I had someone call me the other day. This salesmanship about this, some type of vacuum cleaner, if you buy it, and we'll come by and clean your carpet and everything, and hallelujah, and then this thing is great, and it's free. We won't charge nothing for cleaning your carpet. Bless her heart, she was not mature enough. She ended up buying the thing for about $860. Beautiful girl, loves the Lord. Don't ever tell you 
that that's the only vacuum cleaner in the world like that. And if you don't buy it, you'll never, never see another one like it. Bull. I'm crying on my shoulder. And I felt so sorry. That's why I told Susan, when we first got married, this guy came by and, and taking pictures or something, and, and she bought it. And the and first thing I did, I said, honey, number one, never let a man in the house when I'm out there. We got that clear. Okay, we write that on the wall. Because, see, 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 see the man is a protector. Do, do we understand that? You know, you know what I mean? Hey, listen, I've got a good-looking wife. I've got to take care of her. You don't see that gun I have behind the pulpit, do you? <laughs> Charles has got three of them. A submachine gun. But, but that's true. And sometimes women don't understand that. And I think the man is being bossy. I'm not going into the cuckoo clock tonight. I'm going to give you a break, okay? <laughs> But I, I, I felt tonight as, as the worship was, I, God, you know, I, I, we were going to go through this. This is good. I got, yeah, I got a few of it anyway. Let's submit that. But I'm talking from my heart tonight because I want you to be encouraged. We got some heroes in here. She's a hero. She is. She's a hero. There's a hero. Another hero right there. She's my hero. Heroes, back in the, uh, you're all heroes. I'm, absolutely. See, I don't see as the world. You're a hero. You're our hero. I want you to know that. Hero. Another hero here. I've seen this man stand by his wife. Touched my heart. Susan, every, every Monday, Susan and me would go by where Camilla was. Mike was right there taking care of his wife. Boy, the reward's in heaven. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. That shook me to the foundation of my being. Even though I was a minister, God has done a work in my life. That spoke to me more than any message that I could hear. That's real love. Rosemary a hero. You are. And you're so valuable to this church. You're so valuable to God. And you're special in my heart. And I've known Rosemary a long time, way back in the 70s. And I say that with all of you. You're special. And God's doing a work. And sometimes you don't understand what in the world can come out of, of the situation that you might find. Sandra, my, my number two daughter, she, was, she stayed with Susan and me. She was the one that um, was, I think, 20, 26 and 27. She went out a few dates and all, and, and she was 26 or 7 or 8. I forgot exactly, somewhere right in there. And she said one day, Daddy, what's wrong with me? I, you know, I just I can't get a date like I, or find somebody I really like. I said, honey, whole study. Whole study. Trust the Lord. Well, she was the secretary of the ministry at that time. And God was doing a work in her life, and I knew it. And then she said one day, Dad, I want to go out. I want to quit the ministry and go out and get me a job. I said, Honey, I've taught you to hear the voice of God. If you're hearing the voice of if you are in a place where God can cause you, to hear his voice, if you hear it, you got my blessings. Three weeks later, she said, Dad, I know God wants me to go. Honey, I release you. She went out, got her job in this dentist's office as a secretary. He owned the business. They fell in love. They got married. Now she owns the business. Nothing they lack. Nothing. Homes, beautiful children, everything. Boats, cars, cars, property, everything. And I get my teeth worked on free. 
the blessings will come back to the parents. I want to encourage each and every one of you tonight. I am proud of you. And sometimes you find yourself, you know, like, gosh, am I really counting? Is anything being done? Yes. Wherever God has placed you, you're there, and he can speak. Situations can change just like that. Just like that, it can change. And I've been in those situations like that, and they can change. But know that you are important and that you're special. And you know, sometimes it's the little things, just like Mike being true, and as I, as I watched him with, with, with Camilla, what it taught me about loyalty, being loyal, it spoke volumes to me, Mike. And I appreciate the messages that you didn't know you were preaching at the time. But I was in a place where I could hear the voice of God through the man's life. And I can say that about many of you. You are important. Every one of us. I want to ask you a question. How many people in here believe that their little toe is important? Raise your hand. It's such a little thing. I cracked mine the other day. Now, don't you laugh. <laughs> the bathtub, you know, comes out, and then I'm going to think, boom, man, I tell you, man, man. And, 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 you know, once you hurt yourself like that, and then every time I, <laughs> some of you can feel it, can't you? you can feel it. <laughs> and then I get up the next night, go to the bathroom, and, and I hit my toe again on the, on the bed thing, you know. And I'm down there just almost falling down, and, Susan, and Susan's over there. <laughs> So I get in there, oh my goodness, Lord, you know, Jesus. So I come back to the bed, oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Why is that? You, man, you crack that thing. It is blue right now. It is blue. I mean, it's singing the blues too, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I said, Lord, what am I supposed to learn in this? I don't know. Somebody's going to have to interpret that one for me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but I did not say no bad words. <laughs> there's things that discourage us you know that um, Monday uh, this woman wanted Susan and me to go down and, and visit this person in the hospital so we got ready we went down there I said God I don't want to go down there for a social visit you know God I want to see your power I want to see people one to Christ and that's our prayer you know God, move mightily. Manifest yourself in that room, you know. So we go in there, and guess what? God manifests himself. I share the gospel with the man. He receives Christ. His friend, a woman friend, comes in and is sitting over there, and I'm sharing the gospel with him and give him an invitation call to, to accept Christ. He says, I want to, and he did. And the woman's crying. And I look over there, Susan's over there. I mean, she's like, I mean, the power of God was on her. I said, oh, man, something's going on here for sure. I said, what is it, honey? And she goes, I got it, okay. And I said, what is it? And she said, well, I, I want to accept Jesus. She said, I did something like the 18 years ago, but I, I got to get right with God. So she, I just said, okay, let's accept Jesus right now for the first time. So she accepted Jesus. Now, you, you can't manifest that. You, I mean, you can't plan that. But? I was in the place where I could hear the voice of God and things happen. So many wonderful experiences in a little bit, and we'll have to go, but I have to share this one. Frank's um, um, mother was in the hospital, and Frank and Linda was down there that night, 
And Susan B. came down, and we spent a little time with Frank's mother and everything. And, and then we, we, we had prayer and everything, then we left the room, and Frank come out, and we talked about five minutes. And the reason I'm talking and sharing that with you is because the timing, the timing of God, see. And so I said to Frank, you know, well, we, we, we go. And so we walk down the hallway. We come to the elevator, and I push the button. It opens up. We get in. I push the button. The doors close, but the elevator don't move. So I'm there. I said, hmm. Hey, we're alone at last, honey. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move on from there. <clears throat> uh, so I uh, so I pushed the button again. Nothing happened. So I'll push number two. That's the floor we got on the elevator uh, on. So I push number two. The door opens. This woman is standing there. She says, can you tell me where a pastor is? She said, i got a woman down here who wants to receive Jesus. So we went down there, and we shared the gospel. And that woman gave her life to Jesus. Now look at the timing of that. Absolutely timing. The elevator would not go down. The perfect timing of the God. I was in the place where God could say something. And I could hear God. Now that's what's important. Whether you are a mother raising children, it doesn't matter. Wherever you are at, you are in the place where you can hear the voice of God. Susan was on in clothes one day. And God spoke to her. She unplugged the thing. And she went to this person's house, shared the gospel with this person, and that person received Christ. Because she was in the place where she could hear the voice of God and God talked to her. So many stories that we have like that. And I want to encourage each and every one of you as you go about your everyday walk, your everyday job, they are all, all important. I tell you what, just your presence here tonight inspires me. Just your presence. Because all of us put off the Lord Jesus, a fragrant. Unfortunately, we some of of, of our fragrance, some people don't like our fragrance. And you know that? The Bible says sometimes it's like a, a smell of death to some folks, but some it's an aroma of life. You are important. God's not through with any of us. We're all on the potter's wheel. And God has begun a good work in us, and he will continue that work until the coming of of the Lord and put your faith in that thank God we're not what we used to be we're not exactly what we want to be at the moment but he's changing us it says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 from glory to glory to glory and sometimes we want to miss I said, Lord, let's just knock off those five glories where I can enjoy this glory. No, you won't enjoy this glory. You can't be used like you should be used by God in this glory because you've got to go through each glory. And each glory prepares you for the next glory and the next glory and the next glory and the next glory. See, when I was in school, I didn't want to go to school. I just wanted to graduate. It don't work that way. You have to go first, first, first grade glory, second grade glory. D did you miss any of the glories? No, you had to hit every glory. And then finally, we graduated you. And that's the way God works. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. God is moving. Keep that positive attitude because... At times, sometimes you'll get a negative attitude. Who's ever had a negative attitude besides me? Let me see your hands. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> shock, shock me. I've raised both my hands. And you know, I'm in a place where God talks to me. Bob, 
Let me see your Jesus smile. How many know I learned that from Susan? You go back in that nursery. That's 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 it. Let me see. The kid comes in. Miss Susan said, "Let's see your Jesus smile." Oh, we can do better than that. No, that ain't Jesus. That's better. Jesus smile, and it's important. And sometimes it's hard, but I'm here to encourage you tonight. You may be on that potter's wheel, and we all are. And most of us have some hard knots that has to be loosened out, you know. And, and of course, God is gentle, you know. He, he, just, he just takes the clay off the potter's wheel, and he puts it down, you know. Give me that board over there. Let me see what I... And you get back on that potter's wheel with the Jesus smile. Make me and mold me any way you want. But don't leave me like I used to be. Because they can't stand me down at the church like that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, love me tonight. I love everyone. If anybody need prayer tonight, huh? Come up here and let me get some of those hard knots out. I'll be glad to do it. Charles, let me pray for you too. They've been on vacation. Let's give the Lord uh, praise that they made it back in one piece. Did you learn anything? Yeah, yeah. yeah tell us about it. Let me, all right, let me share real quick. Um, we went on vacation, uh, went to Charlotte to visit some friends for a function, then took the kids to Carowinds. Now let me start out. Let me let me let me go fast forward. We get back home. We get an email that our tenants leaving our rental property. Uh, uh. Let me tell you, God's there's, there, God and Satan is always looking for your reaction. See, God's looking for your reaction, and Satan's looking for your reaction. Satan wants to pounce on you with your reaction, and God wants to bless you in your reaction. So. I'm saying I'm leading off with that because if I'd reacted to that and got sour puss face and that, I wouldn't share with you the blessing that happened over the weekend. See, over the weekend it was a touch and go about going because we were about 150, 200 dollars off the range I wanted us to be at. <laughs> Rachel was a little upset because we didn't get the hotel in time and the price went up, and I said, "Well, we ain't going." <laughs> I told her a couple things, and went back. And Rachel said, <laughs> Amen. Oh, we'll yeah. move on. So she goes back and she does a little research, gets a hotel room cheaper than the one we were going to get before on the original price. <laughs> we go, That's the woman in we're there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, we were able to come. Then we got to get the tickets for Carowinds. That's $125. Well, I'm in the lobby of the hotel talking to the man about Carolyn's tickets at the desk to see if they had the same deal at the place. A lady walks up. You, did you know about the special you can get? Yes, ma'am. Do you have your tickets already? No, we're going to get them today. I've, I've got some. I'll be right back. We don't pay a dime to get in Carolyn's because this lady blesses us with tickets. So the Lord's got a calculator up there, y'all, and he knew what figure I would needed. And he blessed us in it. Uh -huh. Now, see, I took a blessing over the weekend. If I would have got home and saw that email and just went sourpuss, I wouldn't share my blessing. <laughs> How's he going to bless me with a new tenant if I want to even glory in the small blessing he gave me over the weekend? You were in the place where you could hear God. Right glory. where he told us to be. We thought, you think it's not what you wanted, and it was where you needed to be Amen. to get the blessing. I love that. And you don't revel in that, you, the next circumstances throw you off your border. Forget about the circumstance, like I said before. The circumstance is just, that's its own vessel. But your reaction is what God's looking for to continue to bless you, to mold you, like he's saying, or the devil's looking for your reaction to kill you. So what you going to do? 
<laughs> I'm going to keep on talking about the blessings Amen. and not hang up on the circumstance. Amen. That's good. <laughs> Where's your faith? I, I, he said it all. Amen. I don't have anything to say, but it was interesting because I was over in a different area. We're not together much anymore because we have kids. So <laughs> we have to kind of do our own thing <laughs> to k take care of them. And we had a couple of catastrophes happen when we got there. You know, kids falling off the bed and down the stairs and interesting things like that. But when the, the ticket thing came along, I was getting my breakfast. I was dealing with kids on one end. He's at the desk. I didn't even know he was there. So, I mean, the timing was so perfect. And he's like, Rachel, come here. And I'm waiting on my pancakes to pop out. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm busy. Real family life. Yeah. And he's like, Rachel, come here. I'm like, seriously, the tickets could wait, can't they? And I didn't realize he was over here talking to this lady and wanted me to thank her. So, I mean, if he wasn't way over there looking for tickets and I wasn't, you know, I was doing my breakfast thing. So Charles was where he was supposed to be. So God places Amen. us. That's all I have to say. But yeah, everything he said, I agree. Amen. I concur. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll leave it. That's good. Uh, you still want to pray for us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I want you to pray for me. All right. <laughs> Come on, let's stand. We're going to pray for him. <laughs>